we are a group from Dublin Christian Academy, and today we will be performing The Giant's Wife, as told by William Carlton. Many years ago, in the north of Ireland, there lived a giant named Finn McCool. That's me then! One thing Finn was said to have done was make a road that crossed the sea from Ireland to Scotland. You can still see what's supposed to be the first stretch of that road. It's called the Giant's Causeway, and it's a group of great rocks all fitting together. Now, this story happened while Finn was building his road. At the time we're talking about, Finn was a worried giant. He'd been told that another giant called Cuhullin was looking for him to challenge him to a fight. To, to find, find out, out which of them was the strongest. The thought of meeting him face to face made Finn shake in his boots. Well, when Finn had been away from home a good many months, he took it into his head to go home and see his wife. A fine woman named Una. It was two counties away, but sure that wasn't far for a man like Finn. He pulled up a fir tree by its roots. A full-grown tree, mind you. And stripped off the branches to make himself a walking stick. And off he set, and in no time at all, she reached his own mountain and his house he built on it. And there was Una to greet him. Una, me love! Ah, oh, Finn, it's glad I am to see you. I hope you're a bit hungry, for I fixed a little something when I saw you coming. She sat him down to a grand meal of three whole roast oxen, thirty boiled cabbages, and a pile of her best bread loaves, which he just taken from the oven. A finer cook never filled this great belly. But Una could see that her husband was worried about something. What ails you, Finn? Ach, Una, it's this Cuhullin! Finn told her how the dreaded giant was looking for him. And every time I suck me thumb, I get more worried about him. You see, Finn had a magic thumb, and every time he sucked him, it would, warn him, it would warn him of any danger. Now Una was worried too, but she had an idea. Go now and look across the mountain for his coming. You're sure to see him on his way, and that will give us some time to prepare a welcome. So Finn McCool did what his wife did, for he knew her to be a woman of great good sense. Inside the house, she cleared the table and started making a new batch of bread loaves. But this was a special batch indeed, for inside each loaf she put a great iron griddle. Well, at last, Finn ran into the house. Una, he's coming, and he's a terrible size of a creature. If I run away, I'll be shamed forever, but if I stay here, he'll tie my body in knots. Ugh, be easy now, Finn. Just do what I say, and before the day is out, maybe his own forefinger will betray him. You see, Cahillon too had a magic finger. All his strength was in the forefinger of his right hand. If he lost that finger, he'd be no stronger than any ordinary man. He's coming! He'll be here in a minute! Now hold your tongue, Finn, and put on this nightgown of mine. What? Me? Put on the clothes of a woman? Are you trying to make a fool of me? Trust me now, Finn. So, grumbling away, Finn put on his wife's nightgown. Una tied a white bonnet on his head, then pushed him toward the cradle in the corner. Woman, what do you think you're doing? Just lie down there, and you'll need this baby bottle, too. Now keep yourself quiet and leave everything to me. Just then, Cahillon came walking up fast to the house. Good day to you. Come in, then, and welcome. Twill grieve my husband to know you called when he wasn't here to greet you. Well, now, that's very civil of you, woman, but it grieves me even more to learn he's not at home, because I was told I'd find him here. Well then, you were told wrong, for Finn's away at his causeway. He went rushing there in a terrible rage. It seems there's some giant named Cuhullin looking for him, and he went off to teach that fool a lesson. Well then, I'll go and find him there, for I'm Cuhullin, and I won't rest till I've settled any argument about whether he's stronger than me. Och, don't be in such a hurry. Come in and take your rest a while. You'll need it if it's Finn you're going to be fighting, for he's twice your size and ten times stronger looking. Finn nearly fell out of his crane with fright. Oh, why does she have to go and blab like that? Why doesn't she just let him go? But Una wasn't so anxious to get rid of Kuhan. Now just set yourself down, and I'll have a meal ready in no time. I've got the bread all baked and a lovely pot of stew on the fire. Oh, while you're waiting, I wonder if you'd do me a favor. A cold wind blows in through that door this time of day. Would you be so kind as to turn the house to face the other way? Finn always does it for me when he's home. Certainly. Up he got and went outside. With no bother at all, he picked up the whole house and turned it to face the other way. Lynn was a bit surprised, 
because Finn himself couldn't have done it. She just made it up to frighten him, but she didn't let on when he came back in. Thank you kindly. There's just one other thing. I hope you won't mind my asking. Ask on, good woman. Finn was going to dig me a new well near the house, but he forgot to do it. He left in such a terrible temper. There's water under all that rock for certain. All you have to do is pull the mountain apart. All right then, I'll go and find it for you. Off he went again. From the front door, Udo watched him put his big fingers into a little crack in the rock. And with a couple of tugs, he ripped up the mountainside so the water chucked out. Now Una had made up that one too. So when he came back in, she again tried not to look surprised. Come in now and eat! She set his food before him with a big pile of bread loaves, the one she'd made with the iron griddles inside. Now that's fine looking bread. Cahola picked up a loaf and sunk his teeth into it. Ah! A thousand thunderbolts, woman! What did you put in your bread? Why, nothing! What ails you, tall man? That's the bread my husband eats six dozen loaves of every day. You mean he eats this stuff? Sure it is as hard as a rock, and I've lost one of me good teeth on the first mouthful. Didn't I say you were a poor, weak thing compared to Finn? Ah, yes, you'll regret the day he gets his hands on you. He picked up another loaf and sunk his teeth into it. Ah, I've lost me other front tooth. Man, it's a good job you, ne you never met up with Finn. It's more than your two front teeth you'd have lost. You're tricking me. I don't believe anyone eats bread like that. Oh, don't you now? Just wait till you see this. She picked up one of the loaves off the table and brought it over to the cradle where Finn lied just like a baby. This is Finn's son. Isn't he a fine little lad? Just like his daddy. Here you are, me dove. Have a bit of bread. Goo goo. Goo goo. Now, this loaf looked like all the rest, but Una knew this was the only one without an iron griddle. Una gave Finn a big wink. Then he took a huge bite that took away half the side of him. <sighs> That's amazing! And you tell me this is Finn McCool's child? None other! So you can guess what size of a man his daddy is. He must have a powerful set of teeth. Oh, a grand set! Just slip your finger in there to feel them. Open your mouth now, baby. Let the nice man put in his big, strong finger. Kuhon slipped in his great right forefinger into Finn's mouth. Push it in well now, until you feel the back ones. He pushed his finger as far as it would go. Snap! Then bit it off. Swallowed it. Then leapt from the cradle. Aha! Now what did you say you'd do to Finn McCool? Cahollin <laughs> gave a great yeah. swipe at Finn with his fist. But he lost his finger and all his strength with it. So all he did was hurt his hand. Oh, yes! You'd better run! Now Finn, don't be too hard on the poor thing. Finn chased Cahollin halfway across Ireland before he let him go. 